Today we're going to get creative. I'm going to show you how to create dynamic artwork from photographs inside of Photoshop by using custom brushes. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today we've got a really fun creative tutorial. You've all seen those dynamic photos, you know, with the splashes and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to show you how to do that right now and the secret to it is using custom brushes. So why don't we jump in right now and get started. And by the way, if you're new to Photoshop Cafe, hit the subscribe button and you'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. So here we are, we've got a photograph that I just grabbed from Adobe Stock and essentially what I did is I just did a rough cutout of the layer and just put it in a layer mask. So we've got our background layer, which is the same with a copy of our person over the top. It's not even a perfect cutout. We're not going to go through that right now because I've got dozens of tutorials on here on how to cut out people. I'll link one of them below or just check them out on the channel. All right, so what we want to do is we want to create a custom brush. Now we need to get those splatters, you know, those explosions, splatters, splashes, all those kinds of things. And an easy way to do it is actually just to search inside of Adobe Stock. So I actually just found one here, but I can show you how you can do it. It's really easy. You just turn in, let's do splatter. Just type that into Photoshop. And you can see here some that I already downloaded before. Or if we want to go under here, just choose the option here. And we go to Adobe Stock and Photoshop will actually go out there and we'll find some for you. And if you find one that you want, like maybe this one here, just hit the plus button and it will add it into your library. It's as simple as that. Now you could drag it out. So let's just drag this other one out and have a look and see what that looks like. This looks like it's got quite a few different options that we can use. So I think we're going to just kind of give this a shot. Now, here's the thing. If you want to actually buy these so you can use them, you know, the full resolution, all you need to do is just click on here and you can license them. Now, of course, you can use any stock photos that you want. I'm just choosing these ones from Adobe Stock because they're easy to use. And if we drag them out there, we can see now we've got the full resolution version. Now, of course, you can do anything you want to get these splatters. One way is just to get a big white piece of paper, get some ink and just splatter it on there. Take a picture with your phone and that'll work just as well. So in this case, just to save some time, we've got these. So I want to make these into brushes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my lasso tool here. And I'm going to make a selection around the splatter. So I kind of want to get this whole splatter here. And all I do is make that selection. And then I choose Edit, Define Brush Preset. Hit OK. And now we've created one. And there it is. And you can see we could actually paint with that if we wanted. This makes some more. Let's grab our lasso tool again. And by the way, if these are kind of gray, what you want to do is just apply a levels. Let me show you quickly. If these were gray, just hit Control L or Command L for levels. And then you would just kind of pull the blacks in and pull the whites in until you get a really good solid silhouette. We've got a good silhouette here, so we don't need to do that. All right, let's go back here and define another brush. And you can see that instantly becomes a new brush. Let's grab this one. In fact, why don't we grab those little edges there? All right, and you can see how easy it is to define brushes. So just keep repeating this and get as many brushes as you want. Okay, where are these brushes going to live? Well, if we go up and choose our brush, and we go up under our brushes panel here, let me just open this so you can see a little bit easier. These are actually the brushes that we created. And if you look under here, you can see there's our brushes. There's the last one we created right there. Now they show just kind of like this. Now you can change the way that these look by simply going up under here and then choosing brush tip. And with the brush tip, you can see there's the splatters there. In fact, you can even change it like this if you want and just take the brush stroke away. And you could just see the brush tips like that if you wanted. So why don't I select these brushes? I'm just holding the shift key to select them all. And we can right click. And let's make a new brush group 
and we're going to call it splatter. And there we go, under the splatter, we've got our splatter brushes right there. Excellent, let's use them. So what we're going to do is just get rid of this from the top right now and turn off the selection and we're just going to create a new layer in between. So I'm selecting the background and I'm clicking plus to add a new layer and we'll call it back splat. Because these are going to be the ones behind the person. Great. So let's have a look at these different brushes. Why don't we start with something a little bit more dynamic like this one here. And now if you want to change the angle of them, what you can do is hit the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard. So I'm actually just tapping those around like that and I want to drop this one behind them. But let's choose a different color. Why don't we choose something like a orange just to make it easy to see for now. So we can kind of apply that and we could apply another one there. And I think you're starting to see the picture. Let's make the brush smaller, left bracket key. And why don't we change the color on that to something like a, a pinkish color. And we could just kind of drop some splatters in there behind them, just kind of following that direction. And you can see there we could change the size, make it really big. Why don't we do a different color? And we could actually do stuff with the colors later on too. So why don't we do something like that so we've got a good splatter that way. Now let's try a different brush. Let's go down here. Why don't we grab this brush here and see how this looks. This is going to give a really nice effect, although I want to put it on top. So let's create a new layer on top. And then why don't we give this a purplish color? Notice I've got the opacity down pretty low at 22. We could bring that up higher if we wanted, you know, all the way up to 100. Let's increase the size. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit it right there. Now, if you prefer to have that underneath, you could just drag it underneath and you can see how easily you can do that. Let's rotate this all the way around. So I'm hitting that arrow key and also hit the shift key and that'll speed things up a bit. There we go. And we could do, let's grab a bluish color here. That looks pretty fun. And we can move these around, of course. All right, so why don't we put some on top? So I'm just going to go there and I'm going to grab the brush again. Let's try a different one. And as you could see, you know, using different, a lot of different types of brushes is going to be a good idea. It's going to get us a pretty good effect. So we can put some of those on the top. Let me change this to like a greenish color. You know, we could have some of those just kind of going over the top there like that. And maybe make it go smaller. Let's go underneath. Do some more. Let's drop the opacity down about 50%. Tap the 5 key. And let's make these a bit bigger. And then we're just trying to do something here with the angles. See what I'm doing there? Let's do 20% opacity. All right, and I think you get the general idea. So this is what we're sort of doing here. All right, I'm going to choose the move tool. So I've got a little bit, you know, kind of going on here with some of these splatters, some in front, some behind. Now, probably could do a few more in front too if we wanted. In fact, why don't we just duplicate this one and drag it above. Let me make it smaller. Control T, Command T for free transform. Make it a little bit smaller and just kind of attach it like that. Great. Now, if we wanted to do things with the colors, there's other ways we could work with this. See how we've got these into little groups here? Well, here's something that's really kind of neat. Is let me just duplicate this a couple of times. Command J. And what it's doing is just kind of thickening up those strokes. See what I did there? Command J each time. So we've got one, two, three, four of those. 
What I'm going to do is I'm just going to merge them together. So I've selected them all and I'm going to hit Control E to merge them. And you can see it just thickened them up. So if you want to make them a little more opaque, you could do that, you know. But here's something that's fun. If we go to our gradients, let's go under Window and we're going to choose Gradients. And now we've got these gradients here. And this is in Photoshop 2020, we have this gradients panel. And if we go under here, we can see we've got all these different colored gradients. Look at this, we've got different colors here. So here's something fun that we could do with these. Let's, let's look at them. In fact, if you wanna open them all, just hit the control key and click on one of the arrows, it will pop them all open. And we can look through there and say, hey, we've got a lot of colors. What if we want to use this one? Just drag it onto the document. Of course, that's created a gradient background. But if you want to use it on here, just drag it above, hold the Alt or the Option key and click, and it's going to clip it into that layer. So let's do that again with another one. Notice as we do that, it's just kind of clipping, but let's drag it down. Alt or Option, click in there. See what it's doing is it's clipping it in there. Let's do another one. Drag an orange one there. That just one went onto the top. You see how that colored them? And if you want to change the way these colors work, double click on the gradient here, and then you can change things like the scale and watch how it affects the, the actual uh, colors here. See how it's kind of scaling differently? If you scale it large, they're going to more or less be the same color. If you scale it smaller, you're going to see more of a variation. You will also click inside the gradient here and choose different ones. So why don't we try some different ones, see what looks better. Those dark purple ones are looking kind of cool. And you start to see, you know, the different kind of things that we can do with this. Now, if we wanted to do this with a darker background, we could do this. Let's just uh, grab a levels adjustment. And we could just drag down to darken that background. If we wanted to do that, that more of a black, we could do it that way. Or if you wanted more of a gray, see how we can just kind of change that. But I think another thing that might look nice is just to grab another gradient. And let's just drag a gradient out. Make sure it, if it's up there, just drag it down so it's directly above the background. Now, obviously, this is not the right color. But the nice thing about this is we can just simply click on these different gradients until we find one that we like. And in this case, I think this one's kind of cool. Now, I feel like maybe we've got a couple too many here, so why don't we just go in and get rid of some of these? So I'm just hiding some of these here. All right, what if we wanted to colorize our person to just kind of give it an interesting look? Well, here's an interesting thing you could do is we just want to make sure we're working on the layer, which is this one here. Select that layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a gradient overlay. So let's just choose gradient here. Let's go up here and we need to find a nice colored gradient. I'm going under the legacy gradients. And we're going to grab our rainbow color here. And click OK. What we want to do now is clip it to our person. So hold the Alt or the Option key that clips it to our person. Obviously, that's not what we want yet. We're going to go down here and we're going to change the blend mode to color. So now we've got the color blend mode. We can bring the opacity down just a little bit. And see how now we're actually adding this kind of color to him. Double click on the gradient. And what I want to do is I'm going to scale this gradient up. Let's make it bigger. Great. Now, I want to kind of cycle through here. Here's the thing a lot of people don't realize. You can just click and drag on the document to move that gradient. Look at that. So what we're doing is just simply clicking and dragging to move that gradient till we get the colors that we want. And I think that's looking kind of cool. And let's see what it would look like with the old background. It's not bad, but I'm kind of liking that gradient background as well. All right, so there we go. That's just kind of showing you a few quick techniques. Uh, we've been looking at creating custom brushes and gradient overlays on top of our object as well as you know our splatters and different things like that. Now, this is definitely no masterpiece, but I hope it kind of shows you some of the techniques that are used in order to create these type of images. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments underneath. Let me know, did you learn anything new? Do you have any good ideas or suggestions on creating cool creative artwork from photographs?
And by the way, if you're new here to Photoshop Cafe, consider hitting that subscribe button. You'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. Ring that notification bell so you know when I upload it. And if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today we've got a fun creative tutorial. <laughs>